Okay, here we are doing a rather complicated optimization problem involving the old school rules for American football. Uh, you can pause and read this carefully, um, but I've got a diagram here that'll get you up to speed if you don't want to do that. So it works like this. You've got a uh, typical American football field with an end zone. You've got goal posts that are set back only five yards. They're eight yards apart and they're 22 yards from the sidelines. Uh, the rules used to be that where the ball uh, was stopped, where you were tackled, was where you had to kick a field goal from if you were out of downs. And uh, um, the question is, what if you're tackled way over here in the corner? You'll see that your angle to the goal posts is really skinny, almost impossible. So sometimes they would take an intentional penalty to back up and they'd get a little bit better angle at the goal. You could back up even more to get a little better angle at the goalpost like this. And the question is, at what spot back here, what distance back from the end line, X, will you get the optimum angle to go through the goalpost like that? Okay, so essentially what we have to do is work out the larger angle right there and then subtract that smaller angle right there and that'll give us this angle theta that we're trying to optimize. Okay, well, if you look at the geometry of this and the numbers over here, this angle theta, based on some distance x we're moving backwards, is going to be that larger angle, which will be the inverse tangent of the opposite length, which is going to be 8 plus 22, that's 30, over this distance, which with that, with that 5 yard setback will be x plus 5. And then we're going to subtract the inner angle, which is again going to be inverse tangent. In this case, it's that um, shorter distance to the nearest goalpost, 22, over that same x plus 5. Okay, now as with all optimization problems, our goal then is to take the derivative and set it equal to 0 and solve for that um, maximum value of the angle. So to take the derivative then, if you remember how it goes with inverse tangent, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus this inside squared. So I'm going to make that 900. I can do that. And then I'm just going to write x plus 5 squared. Uh, don't just automatically foil things out until you really need to. Then remember, I cannot forget, I take the derivative of the inside. First you take the derivative of the outside. Don't mess with the inside. There it is and then times the derivative of the inside. Well, this is a quotient rule. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is zero, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is just one. So it's minus 30 all over then the bottom squared, x plus five squared. So we get that a second time, which is kind of nice, minus, and then we do the same thing. So I'll go through that fairly quickly. One over one plus uh, 22 squared is, 484, I believe, all over x plus 5. Uh, that's going to be squared. I don't need the parentheses on the top. And then again, the derivative of the inside will be a minus. Well, I'm just going to, I'll just leave it minus for now. Yeah, probably cancel later. Minus 22 over x plus 5 squared. And again, that's the quotient rule. Okay. Well, we want to set this equal to 0 question mark, question mark, when does that happen? All right, so now I just have to go through the algebra fairly uh, carefully. And I think that probably the easiest thing to do is to just sort of multiply the numerators and the denominators. And then I will get zero equals negative 30 over, and when I distribute this in, I'm gonna get x plus five squared, and when I multiply it into here, that'll cancel, and I'll get plus 900 minus, and then a minus, well, I guess I'll make that a plus 22 over, and then multiplying the denominators to each of these, like I did before, x plus 5 squared, and then again, they'll cancel, plus 484, all right? Well, when is that going to be equal to zero? Well, this is a minus, so I just move that over. And uh, then if I now expand this and I now expand that, then I'll just cross multiply. Okay, so I'm going to basically get rid of that negative and I'll make this equals, moving it over. When I expand this, I'm going to get 
then uh, I'll keep the 30 and I'll keep the 22 and then that's going to be x plus sorry uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus 900 I guess I should just done the math then and this is going to be then x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus 484 when I do that uh, addition that's just going to be uh, I might as well write it again it gets a little bit tedious but you can just follow more easily this way plus 10x plus 925 equals then 22 x squared plus 10x plus what is that 509 and let's see I can cancel this point and make that a 15 cancel that make it 11 it's just a little bit easier try to do stuff like that whenever you can uh, cross multiply and so when I get 15 times that and I get 11 times all of this I'm gonna get 11 X squared plus 110 X plus uh, when I multiply that I'm gonna get 1175 I'm not doing that in my head but I'm also trying to save you time having to watch me do the multiplication this then is 15 X squared plus 150 X plus and then that is uh, 1635 and now I do have two quadratics so standard operating procedure is to shove everything over to one side set it equal to zero so when I take away the 11 X from both sides I get 4 X squared take away 110 from both sides I get 40 X take away uh, the 10 175 from both sides and I will get a negative 25 40 I believe and now I can divide everything by 4 just to make things a little bit simpler x squared plus 10 X minus 635 okay well at this stage you could try to factor uh, maybe it's factorable but I just don't have the time for that so I'm going to put it into a quadratic formula so X then is equal to minus 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 4 times 1 times negative 635 all over 2a which is 2 times 1 which then gives me x being equal to minus 10 plus or minus the square root well those negatives cancel out and I'm multiplying by 4 when I just divided by 4 so I don't have to do any math that's 2540 to 2640 all over 2 and that if you this is going to be very very close to um, 35 ish I think and or 30 ish no no let's see what will that be close to um, that's me close to uh, 50 and then you're gonna take away 10 and you're gonna divide by 2 so I do believe if you check this out it's gonna be very very close to about uh, 20.5 yards I'll leave you to do that to put into your calculator because I'm not going to spend the time doing that. But that makes about sense that if you go back to our original drawing, that if this is 5, somewhere back here about 20 yards. I would highly recommend that you take your calculator and simply type this in, which is what I did, just to make darn sure. Because if you simply type this in and then give yourself a window, x is going to be from x min is going to be around 0, x max. I don't know, make it like 40 yards, 50 yards, something like that. And then uh, the um, angle theta is, if you put it in degree mode, you know, it'll be from like zero to maybe 40 degrees. And when you look at the graph, if this is your window, you're gonna see it, it, it starts uh, at zero, goes up, and then it kind of tapers off like this. And you will find on your graph that the max is, I believe, very close to 20.5. All right, good luck.